Hi, I'm Laura Carroll, a longtime crabber with experience caring for a wide range of animals. I have more than a decade of experience with freshwater aquariums. I've had reptiles since I was a child, and I've been keeping hermit crabs seriously for about 10 years. I love how everything ties together. I've even learned things that help me care for my crabs while I was studying dog training. Crabs are very different from my other animals, but we all evolved on the same planet and share surprising commonalities. Until your power goes out, you don't usually think about it, but lighting runs your whole day and influences many bodily systems. Let's look into a few ways we can use it to improve the lives of our crabs. The sun emits energy across most of the electromagnetic spectrum, but as you can see, visible light is a narrow band that makes up both a larger percentage of the sun's output and it best penetrates the Earth's atmosphere. Just below our vision is infrared light and just above it is ultraviolet light. And as you can see, a portion of those spectrums make it to Earth. Though the visible spectrum doesn't include wavelengths of light human eyes aren't able to perceive, vision into the ultraviolet spectrum is common in other animals. When we're choosing lighting for our vivariums, it's important to consider the vision of the animal we're keeping and what lighting might look like to them. By eliminating a spectrum of light visible to our animals, they effectively become colorblind. It's easy to imagine that a lack of full spectrum lighting is an additional stressor for wild caught animals. Even familiar items will be the wrong color. Unfortunately, there are no bulbs that perfectly replicate the composition of natural sunlight, and the information about the eyes of terrestrial hermit crabs is sparse. If you look at the crab care in publicly available studies, there are a lot of husbandry issues that could impact a crab's reaction to lighting. Even with ideal care, newly captured individuals may not react naturally to light due to fear. Though they're long-term captives, my crabs behave differently through their molt cycles, and that is also not taken into consideration. We do know that at least in purple pinchers, their vision is skewed towards the blue light and less sensitive towards red light. This is similar to other crustaceans, many of whom have excellent color vision and can see into the UV spectrum. Based on my personal experience, I strongly suspect hermit crabs can perceive at least UVA, which is the closest to the human visible spectrum. In my experience with long-term captives, they are much more interested in bulbs that produce some UVA and tend to spend more active time during the day on the lighted side of the vivarium when there is a steep gradient from light to shade. Household incandescent bulbs produce a small amount of UVA, and household fluorescents produce a bit more, but lights meant for birds and reptiles, which have great UVA perception, are the best options for providing UV light to crabs. Circadian rhythm is just the name for the psychic changes throughout an animal's body in response to the time of day. Though bodies self-regulate to some degree, in animals that can perceive light, the sun cycle strongly influences their circadian rhythm. We tend to think about just a sleep-wake cycle and the activity level, but it impacts everything. Have you ever felt like your allergies are worse at night? They are. Even immune response is influenced by time of day. There is a lot of information about disruption in human circadian rhythms, and unfortunately, it isn't about how great it is for us. There's obviously much less information about invertebrates, but what is available indicates that it's just as bad for other animals. Melatonin is a hormone that helps regulate sleep, and studies in other animals indicate that melatonin production alters predictably in response to light and temperature cues based on their natural sleep pattern. Nocturnal animals produce more melatonin in response to light. Diurnal animals produce melatonin in the absence of light. Artificially altering melatonin production has been shown to alter other hormones in bodily processes. For instance, in some crustaceans, Changing melatonin level can also cause hyper or hypoglycemia, and that's similar to what we've found in humans. For animals living only with artificial lighting, this can have big health implications, both because artificial light may lack important environmental cues and because light pollution from outside of the vivarium can disrupt nocturnal activities. Ideally, we should replicate natural triggers as well as we can. There are some fantastic, expensive automated systems that can help us create a very natural light cycle, but there are also very low or no cost options. You know how all those articles about sleep hygiene talk about blue light? That's because blue light is most prevalent in the middle of the day and it's a strong environmental cue for diurnal animals to wake up and crepuscular and nocturnal animals to go to sleep.
Most of the varium lighting for UVB plant growth and viewing will be skewed towards the white and blue spectrum, while heat bulbs are often redder colors, but the actual color temperature will be listed on most bulbs. Grow lights designed only for plants are often blurple or other obviously unnatural colors because plants make best use of extremes of the spectrum. I avoid using grow bulbs for animals for that reason, and you can certainly use light colors closer to natural daylight for plant growth if you're trying to add plants to your crab habitat. You don't have to buy special bulbs to create a more natural cycle for your crabs. 2500K lighting is readily available as accent lighting, and bulbs labeled as daylight will usually be 5000K or above. Be careful with aquarium lights. They may be a great option, but those made for deeper water corals tend to be unnaturally blue because blue light penetrates the ocean more deeply. Afternoon sunlight on a clear day is incredibly bright compared to any indoor lighting. A drastic increase in the intensity of light signals the time of day just as much as the change in the color of lighting. Thankfully, hermit crabs tend to seek shade when the sun is at its brightest, so it's not necessary to try to replicate that level of light in captivity. But increasing the intensity of your lights in the middle of the day can help give them a more realistic light cycle. I'll discuss different styles of bulbs later in the presentation, and by mixing them you can create a much more realistic lighting schedule for your crabs, even with inexpensive household bulbs. While they are certainly more active during the night, my crabs still often choose to spend time exposing themselves to bright light. There isn't enough research available to say that crabs do or don't use UVB light for vitamin D synthesis, but by looking at other species, we can make guesses. Based on current research in other species, I think it's an important component of good crab habitat lighting. Let's take a closer look at it. What we think of as vitamin D is really a few chemical precursors converted by our bodies to a hormone which is most famous for controlling calcium metabolism in vertebrates. In some animals, it can be absorbed from foods high in vitamin D, and in other species, it must be synthesized in the skin by a combination of exposure to UVB light and warm temperature. Many species use a combination of UVB exposure and dietary intake to maintain ideal levels. We mostly think of calcium metabolism because vitamin D was only discovered after rickets became common in children during the Industrial Revolution. Metabolic bone disease, or MBD, is the equivalent in captive reptiles, and they both result from a prolonged deficiency. As more research has become available, we've learned that vitamin D is needed all over the body, at least in vertebrates. A normal calcium metabolism is necessary for nerve function, and bodies are thrifty. Your body tries to keep you functional, so that system is the last to go. By the time the skeletal system is damaged, immune function, cell proliferation, cognition, energy levels, and any number of other systems have suffered. Just because an animal is living and reproducing, that doesn't mean that their vitamin D is at an ideal level. Entire populations of humans lived and reproduced for hundreds of years with dangerously low vitamin D levels. In the reptile community, many keepers are starting to provide low-level UVB to their crepuscular and nocturnal reptiles, and they find that their animals seek exposure and that their activity levels, immune function, and vigor improve. Personally, I've been diagnosed with low vitamin D through a blood test, and I can confirm that you can feel horrible long before more obvious symptoms develop. Everyone who's ever gotten a sunburn knows that excessive exposure to UV light can be dangerous, and some people worry that this means we shouldn't provide UV light for our crabs. Hermit crabs are from the tropics, and animals from very sunny environments are well adapted to protect themselves from UV light. Ferguson zones are often mentioned on the package of UVB bulbs, and they can help you determine how much UVB you should provide. You don't need to provide the maximum they would ever encounter in the wild, but something closer to what they'd most often spend time in. My crabs are more active during stormy weather and other times when the UV index would be lower in the wild, so I don't provide the equivalent of noon sun on a beach near the equator. I only have experience with a few species of hermit crabs, but by looking at the activity of the species you're keeping and the UV index during those conditions, you can compare that to the needs of more common species of reptiles and get a better idea of what kind of UV index your species might prefer. 
I'm in the subtropics, so I'm a little too far north for wild hermit crabs, but in July our exposure is high enough to get an idea of how weather conditions and time of day change the UV index. As you can see, clouds and shade can drop the UVI significantly, even in areas that are usually extremely high index. The sunbeam and shade methods are easy ways to make sure that your hermit crabs are able to regulate their UV exposure. Normally, you'll want the target maximum UV index in the closest possible place your animal can reach, but we all know that hermit crabs are going to climb right up to the bulb if they can. I measure the UV index in the closest place my crabs are likely to spend a lot of time and just make sure that the UV index in the actual closest spot they can reach isn't over the maximum they'd encounter in the wild. This method is common for species like day geckos, which are prone to UV burns and able to run across the ceiling of their cages. If my crabs start spending a significant amount of time right up against the bulbs, I'll reevaluate, but in the years that my crabs have had access to UVB lighting, I haven't had that problem. They go up to the bulb for a few minutes, especially when I first added it, but they don't spend all day there. I can't tell you exactly which UV bulb you should buy because different setups will change how much UVB light the animals can access. Understanding how different vivarium setups change UV access can help you make the best choice for your vivarium. As far as measuring UVI yourself, a solar meter 6.5 is by far the most common and most useful option, but unfortunately there are a couple hundred dollars in the US. Zoomed's meter is the same product rebranded and usually a little more expensive. I'm not aware of any cheaper UV meters that are reliable. If you only have one vivarium and you aren't buying a lot of UV bulbs, you really don't need one. But if you have a lot of animals that would benefit from UVB light, they will eventually pay for themselves because you can replace your bulbs based on what they're actually putting out instead of the manufacturer's schedule. If you have access to somewhere where hermit crabs live in nature, you can also use them to gather data. I'll go over the types of bulbs in more detail in the following slides, but the most important thing to remember is that you're aiming for a safe and effective level of UV light for your individual species and vivarium size, not the most possible. I do urge you to stick to Reptisun or Arcadia bulbs if they're available in your country because they have been the highest quality and have had years of extensive independent testing. It can be a little harder to get Arcadia products outside of Europe, but usually if your local retailers are sold out, you just need to wait a couple of weeks and a shipment will clear customs. I'll provide links to the retailers in the US that I personally use at the end of the presentation. At this time, there are a few LED UVB bulbs on the market, but they aren't reliable. The technology to produce LED UV lights is still very expensive, and independent testing has shown that those that are currently on the market don't work as advertised. They likely won't be a safe option for several years at least. If you're on Facebook and have questions, I highly recommend the Reptile Lighting Group, which I'll link at the end of the presentation. They have extensive files with independent readings on many common bulbs, and one of their admins is Dr. Fran Baines, who has done fantastic research on lighting and UVB. There are tons of professionals and advanced hobbyists. They are very willing to help you. These are both long tube bulbs, just with different power outputs. T5 bulbs are very skinny and come in either standard output or high output, which uses more power and requires a high output fixture. Some people will tell you T5 is superior technology. T5 is certainly newer and more powerful, but they aren't ideal for every situation. Arcadia's Shade Dweller is a fantastic standard output T5 bulb, made specifically for crepuscular and nocturnal animals, but it's too strong close to the bulb for crabs to have direct access. If you don't have the ability to create a little bit of a raised lighting compartment and you don't want to use a bulb card, T8 will be a better option. I don't personally own these styles of bulbs, but I'll link an article by Dr. Fran Baines at the end of the presentation. She includes great graphics with the UV output of various brands and styles of bulbs to help illustrate where you should use them. 
Compact fluorescents don't last as long as linear fluorescents, but many of them could safely be used for crabs and would provide a good UV gradient in very small vivariums where a 12 inch linear bulb would be too much. The all-in-one bulbs are tempting, but the output is too much for the vast majority of crab habitats and they can't be dimmed. Because you can't change light and heat independently, it's hard to get them right for lower light animals and it's not worth the risk if you don't have a solar meter. As you can see, even the weakest T5 bulbs aren't going to be a good option for most crabitats, while there are some T8 options that will work well for most of them. Without a reflector, the UV index will be cut by about 50% away from the bulb. These are a few of the bulbs I own with the UVI I've tested while they're still fairly new. The UV output will decrease over the life of the bulb. As you can see, even the weakest T5 bulbs aren't going to be a good option for most habitats. while there are some T8 options that will work for most of them. Without a reflector, the UVI will be cut by about 50% away from the bulb. Sometimes that's not enough UVB. Sometimes that's a good thing. You don't want them to have too much either. I have progressed from a black thumb to maybe a yellow thumb, and a big way I've done that is by learning more about lighting. Bulbs meant primarily for viewing or UVB just aren't strong enough for most plants. Like many of us, I've researched plants that grow in my crab's native environment and completely failed to grow them myself. Crabs beat up plants and digging crabs will trash the roots, but what I learned when I started planting vivariums for other animals is that um, I was killing my plants, usually with inadequate lighting. Many plants from the coast require full sun and that light intensity is hard to provide indoors, especially while meeting the needs of your animals. If you want to try growing some higher light plants, LED spotlights will probably be your best option, especially if you've given your crabs more than a foot of climbing room. Hanging pots at the top of the vivarium right under the lights can also help. If you have money to throw at the problem, I highly recommend Arcadia Jungle Dawn products, but I've had success in various aquariums and vivariums with normal LED spotlights. When you're shopping for house hold bulbs for plants. You want the highest light output and the highest color temperature you can find. There are already plenty of good resources for the different types of bulbs and how to figure out what you're buying, but these are the things I've found most helpful when shopping for household bulbs to use with my crabs. There isn't one best style. If you want highlight plants or a spot of bright sunlight at the bottom of a tall vivarium, a spotlight will be useful. If you want soft lighting to replicate a cloudy day, a frosted globe bulb would be ideal. We think it's necessary to give animals from the tropics a 12 hour day, but when it's only one color and intensity of light, we're not really doing that. Sunlight doesn't just turn on and off. Just like many humans can't go right to sleep after staring into a blue light, animals that are most active in lower light conditions need environmental cues that it's evening and it's time to wake up. If you can't provide extra bulbs and timers, consider shortening the photo period in your vivarium a little and letting natural sunlight from windows help create dusk and dawn for your animals. The very first day I offered an artificial twilight to my crabs, everyone piled out of their cocoa huts about 30 minutes after their bright day lights went off. That has also been my experience with crepuscular reptiles. Providing low light conditions to low light animals can be just as important as providing very bright light to animals most active in the middle of the day. Putting biology aside, I see a lot of people who spend all the money and time to set up their crabs and then give them up when they never see them. It's harder to invest in an animal that's rarely awake when you can see, and often this is reflected in the care information readily available for truly nocturnal animals. People think that they need smaller cages and less enrichment just because they can't see what they're doing all night. If you can control the light outside of your vivarium, you can create light conditions that trigger more activity in your crabs, and because it will be brighter in their vivarium than it is in the room, it's much harder for shy crabs to see movement outside of the tank. It's very rewarding to to see shire animals enjoying the habitat you've built for them and it sets everyone up for success. 
Here are two examples of my midday and morning and evening lighting. I'm like most people, I have no idea how to make my cell phone camera stop adjusting the lighting, but I tried to pick two pictures that realistically portray the lighting conditions I'm using in my Krabitat. Heat and light are very closely related in nature. When light is absorbed by an object, it becomes heat. A big change that's starting in the reptile community is the move away from ceramic heat emitters and heat mat as the sole source of heat because they don't warm the body the same way that natural sunlight does. If you think about how much cooler you feel in the shade versus the sun or how hot pavement might be on a sunny day, it's easy to see how much that difference might matter to an animal depending on their environment for body heat. Heat is also necessary for the efficient synthesis of vitamin D, and in reptiles, heat impacts melatonin production along with temperature. Most organisms have involved in an environment where heat and light go together, and it's important for us to remember that. Incandescent bulbs are better at producing heat similar to natural sunlight, specifically because they're less efficient than more modern bulbs. Crabs certainly spend a lot of time under their current lights, and in the future, I'd like to alter my lighting compartment and offer them more gentle incandescent lighting to better replicate diffused sunlight. I haven't had the opportunity to experiment with this parameter, but I expect it will be important. I know I sound like an Arcadia rep during parts of this, but unfortunately we are not affiliated. They don't pay me, I pay them.